how to DIY mate any transmission to any engine. This can be done without knowing any of the blueprint locations. However, it makes it a lot easier if you know at least one of them. This is my second time doing this swap and the first time I did it, I didn't have anything other than the engine block pattern, which is the same way I started this time. However, I did know a few of the transmission side bolt holes, so that made it a little easier this time, but I'm gonna go over how I did it the first time. How I did it the first time was I started with a half inch thick plate that was gonna be my adapter plate. I went with half inch because a half inch of thread engagement for the transmission bolts should be plenty. I had a plate similar to the aluminum one here. Uh, originally I did it out of steel and I had it just kind of like a half circle so I had plenty of extra material to just make sure that I was gonna fit everything without actually knowing where anything was at to begin with. I also had to have a little extra on the bottom, like say two inches below your crank center line just to take up any bolts down here. If you've got a transmission that's got more bolt pattern at the bottom, you'll need more of a full circle. Now the way to start this is by starting with the center of the crankshaft point. This does two things. You're able to either make a jig to line up off of the crank center line to get the block side stuff, or you're able to use it like I did on the input shaft of the transmission because the input shaft stuck out a little bit where I was able to just machine that whole first hole that's on crank center line to be basically using the input shaft as an alignment pin. A combination of those two ideas is what I've done this time. I've made a mandrel that bolts into the block and it's got that hole to locate the input. This holds it for sure in line enough that everything's gonna line up and work. That input shaft does have a little bit of play back and forth as far as, you know, whether it'll engage or not, but it all kind of like just naturally settles out. I knew what the BOP pattern was because that's an easy to find blueprint on the internet. Like I said, if you have some of those, it makes it a lot easier. And if you don't have those, then you need to figure out how you could like say here, go in from the back side and be able to put a center point on and get your holes drilled that line up with the block. Really the block side isn't as big a deal. The big thing is that you need to get your dowels so that it locates the plate positively to the block. Now for the transmission, I did know a few holes, these top ones line up and this dowel over here lines up. So I got three out of six. And the reason is this is a modular bell housing for a Ford. Those three locations line up with a regular small block Ford. The other ones don't and it's a difficult to find blueprint. I've still not been able to find a proper blueprint for the mod motor stuff online. So what we're doing now is lining up and we can center punch our holes. The one I gotta be careful with is this one because that's the other dowel. And right now you can see a little bit of a half moon there that was from where I thought it was gonna be that would have been the small block Ford one. Obviously it doesn't line up, it's a different location. I'll have to fill weld that back in on this plate. Originally when I did that it was, a, you know, I had a solid plate and then once I was able to bolt it down to the block and know that I had that pattern fit well, this was all still solid plate in here and then I was still located off the input shaft, but I was able to stand it up just like I'm doing right now and then rotate the transmission until all the holes cleared. Once you have a position where you know that all of the holes will work out without hitting each other, then you just take a transfer punch and you can transfer punch those locations. With a solid plate, you're able to then take that back to a mill or being very careful on the bench, drill and keep that sucker on center. I like to use the mill just so I'm holding it and knowing that I'm not, my drill's not walking around. 
and get those holes drilled nice and straight, you got a lot of wiggle room on the ones that are just the bolts. Like I said, the ones with the dowels are what's important. Uh, the big thing there was I basically got it centered up with a drill point. And then since I could indicate what my crank center line was and where that location was supposed to be with a digital readout, um, and just kind of compare the numbers and make sure that something made sense. Like if it came out to, let's say something that was uh, 623, well, I'm pretty safe to assume that it's supposed to be a 5 8 measurement, so make it 625. And by doing that, I was able to locate both dowels and machine this. That's how I discovered the first time that the one lined up with the regular small block Ford stuff. And then after you've got all of your holes put in and it bolts up to the transmission and it bolts up to the engine nice, then you can cut away all of that extra material off of that solid plate. And it will move and flex depending on how you're cutting it. You know, and even just from the stress relieving of the material, because it's a lot of material they're taking off of it. But once it goes back onto the dowels bolted to the engine, it'll straighten out and everything will be where it needs to be. Now, depending on what you have, you may be concerned about the amount of run out, but that's kind of the whole point of using um, a spud or that plate to locate the transmission versus the engine. Uh, that's why I'm doing it with the spud this time around because I didn't make a solid plate. And the big reason for that was just cost. Uh, having the solid plate lasered out would have uh, been another 60, 70 dollars compared to what I got. So I was able to just make the spud. That holds the transmission located dead on center. And then because I have three other bolts, like I made the dowel and pounded it in there on the one that did line up and the transmission dropped immediately on with that whole spud sticking off of the input shaft. So I know that that's all lined up and really good there. Now it's just a matter of getting the rest of the holes transferred, get the other dowel in, make sure that all still lines up. And as long as all three of them go together, I'm gonna to be more than close enough for any possible run out issues on the transmission. So I modified it a little bit here to make sure I could move that dowel. Made a drill bushing so that I could drill into the aluminum plate and all the way through the steel. I then had to enlarge that hole and it got a little sloppy. So now to fix that, I've got the plate located on the block. We're pinched over here to make sure it's holding the plate down because I have no bolts in the plate to the block because I wanted to get everything positioned. Right now it's got the dowel in there, it's got the dowel on the other side and I can still reach in here and I can turn the transmission input shaft nice and easy. So I know everything's lined up. And I want to positively locate this because it's a little loose. So that's why we're gonna bolt this down. And then I can remove the plates with the transmission and then weld it on the back side because it's a steel pin to the steel plate. The first time around that I did this, I ended up having the stock flex plate, a spacer, a flywheel that could all bolt to the engine, and then redrill that flywheel for the Ford clutch to make it all function. Later on, I found out that I could buy a different length input shaft for this transmission that's a half inch longer. And that completely eliminated my need for any spacers other than the adapter plate. And it also made it so that I could just run a regular standard GM clutch on a GM flywheel. And surprisingly enough, the Ford Pilot bearing, I had an adapter on the first engine this was hooked to. The second engine I actually didn't need an adapter. The back of the crank was already the right size, so that worked out really nice. But if you've got something that's just not that easy to put together, you can start changing the thicknesses of stuff. Like you can run a thicker plate if they need to get farther apart. You can always bolt a spacer onto the back of the crankshaft. You know, all you gotta do is keep the original flywheel or flex plate so that it engages the starter if it's run off that way. If you got a starter that bolts to the transmission, then it's gotta kinda move with that. But it's just a matter, as long as you get the heights to work out between the two, it really doesn't matter. All you're doing is connecting one to the other Everything in between is just make it fit.